All right, guys, welcome back to Clav Bricks. Today, we're going to be building the What If Captain Carter and the Hydra Stomper set. Now, I'm building this today mostly because the What If series is premiering. It's either going to be scheduled with this video tonight or it would have already happened last night. So I thought I'd put this video out. Um, I personally love the minifigures for this set. I, I think Red Skull, Steve Rogers, and Captain Carter are great. Um, you've already seen this in my haul video, but for those who haven't, um, this is the whole Hydra Stomper mech. And I think that Hydra Stomper is for Steve, not Captain Carter, although I could be wrong. Um, the last mech I did didn't turn out too well, and that was the Thor mech, so hopefully this one's built a bit more sturdy than the previous one. All right, well, let's get into it. Okay, the first thing, the book size, fantastic. That is a great sized set book. I am so happy with that. The negative, there's two sticker sheets. Two of them. <laughs> oh, my worst nightmare. <laughs> um, this set comes with three bags, so I've already opened the first... Um, just for the audio issues. I know that in the past we've had some um, with opening the bags, causing the set to literally um, make the world's loudest shanking noise into the microphone. So first up, we've got the Peggy Carter or Captain Carter style minifigure first, which is pretty basic, but it comes with this shield similar to Caps, but it's a Captain Britain, I guess you'd call it. Um, so that, that's fine. That's all well and good. Um, I'm pretty sure I put it on the right side. Yes, I did. Peggy's head is double-sided. I'm liking a lot of these, um, double-sided minifigures at the moment. So it's really nice to have a, another one of those to add to the list of the Marvel minifigs. It's pretty cool to be honest, actually, this Peggy Carter minifig. Like, I don't actually mind it. I think, to be honest, it's probably worth the set alone if you don't get the minifigure bags um but otherwise yeah look that's that's probably worth the investment all right onto the actual mech itself this is the part that sometimes worries me is actually building it uh <laughs> hopefully this one's sturdier than the last one um so first we'll need a piece for the base so that's that one there and that'll go on the bottom like that and then that is followed by this piece here and we'll start to get like a shape of a body um, first, I believe. Uh, but this is like the lower torso section. And then we'll slowly build our way up as the set goes. And then obviously down with the legs as well later. Um, like that. And then we'll need another one of these in here. And we'll put those on there. This is the similar, similar build to the Thor mech um, armor, which I struggled with, to be honest. Oh, there goes Peggy. <laughs> Um, but look, you know, I'll give every one of these sets a chance. You know, I, I'm excited about collecting them all, um, and building what I can. So look, I won't, I won't discriminate until I've actually done it. Then I will be able to say, Hey, this one sucks. Oh, this one was actually good. You know, I've also still got Tony Stark's Sarkarian Iron Man. Is it Iron Man? I think it's Iron Man, um, to go. And that comes with the Watcher as well, which I'm excited to have in my collection. Um, now we're going to add some green. We need lots of green. There's not enough green in the world of Lego. We need more of it. Let's let's bring out some green sets. You know, I like the colours. The colours of these mechs really pop. I recently went through and sorted all my instructions, so it reminds me of Exo Force, which is kind of funny. <laughs> um, but that's all right. All right, so these are like I like these. These are big chunky joins. That's what I want to see more of Lego. Because last time it felt like you skimped on me with the little tiny joins for the Iron Man mech. So that's what I want to see. Some proper, large, bulky joins. That's what we need in the world. Some of those. I'm actually really hyped for the What If series. Once again, we've had some focus issues. Uh, I don't know why my camera does it. It's got something wrong with it, I think. Um, so what I've done is I've repositioned it. Hopefully this solves my issues again. It seems to have periods where it'll happily work and then other times where it really refuses, um, which is quite frustrating because you do miss parts of videos sometimes. Um, so that sucks, but just work with what I've got and hopefully now it'll be all fixed and I'll be all good to make some videos. Um, what I was saying though is I'm really hyped for the What If series. Um, I don't think Tom Holland ended up repri reprising his role as Spider-Man. I think someone else ended up voicing him. 
in that series. Um, however, I'm not sure who it was. I don't think it was Patrick Neil Harris. It could have been. It could have been, but I'm not sure. Um, or it's someone else who has voiced him recently in an animated series. That is also entirely possible. Um, I personally think there is a lot of room for these sort of Lego sets to come out. Because what if is such an expansive, like, question, you know? Like, what if this happened? Like, Lego could run with this and make as many Lego sets as they wanted. And it would not... Like, no one would bat an eye because you could do literally anything and they could be like, well, it could happen. You know, like, the writers want to do a Star Wars crossover and really tried for it. Obviously, both entities are owned by Disney. So it is entirely possible. Don't rule it out. I mean, look, there could, in theory, be a lightsaber, you know? Like, a lightsaber could appear. I put that in the wrong spot. A lightsaber could appear. Um, anything could happen like that. So, look, it's not unrealistic that it could happen. It's just, you know, it depends where they want to take what if. I know that Peggy Card is going to be, like, the main driving force um, for the series, and she's going to be in each and every season when they can make her. So... For that to be the case, then obviously um, they'll do as much as they can with Captain Carter. But other stuff, it has a lot of room depending on where the story goes as well. You know, like what if Loki killed Kang or, or it didn't happen? You know, like things like that. Or what if Iron Man was Spider-Man and, and Spider-Man was the one that was his mentor? You know, like things like that. Uh, it, there is so much room for weird stuff. Like, I just... I, I love this idea for these sets. This set, the Sakarian one, great, fantastic. I literally love this sort of stuff because it just gives LEGO the freedom to make cool stuff. And that's when they do their best work, when they get the freedom to make things. You know, obviously they will have strict, like, hey, you've got to fill these criteria because it's being Marvel and Marvel try to control the entity as much as possible. Um, but when they can, they let people exercise their freedoms, and that's when some of the greatest stories have arisen from Marvel. Hence the Iron Man. Um, they were like, okay, we're going to take a punt on this, um, you know, like 90s, not, not 90s, earlier than that, figure. And all of a sudden, it, you know, blew up the box office, and uh, Tony Stark was a hit, and that created the... Marvel Cinematic Universe, you know, that revived Robert Downey Jr.'s career, paved the way for so many other actors to come into the universe, you know, like, there are there are so many actors, even directors, that have been given a chance, you know, Sam Raimi, who directed the first three Spider-Man movies, is directing Doctor Strange, who, who would have thought he'd be back for another Marvel movie after Venom... Venom was played by Tobin Grace. Is that I can't? I think that's his name. It's just funny. I, I think it's really funny. Um, I don't know if everybody else does, but I definitely do. I actually missed a piece in this building process here for this bag, so I will fix that up. Put that in there. Cool. So we're starting to get the body portion of the mech coming along nicely, and we're doing the sort of shoulder pieces. This is definitely what the Exo Force. Um, style builds were like back in the day um, and it's it's very hero factory except it's build your own hero hero factory um, which yeah it it's I, I actually am thoroughly enjoying this I thought the bro Thor's new Asgard was pretty good this is about an 8 out of 10 at the moment for this build I like that it's really sturdy it's currently ticking the boxes all right I'm not going to give it the full green light at the moment but this is a pretty good set. And if this is good, then I'm very keen to see how Tony Stark's mech goes. Because that one will also be pretty cool to build through. And we're just going to outline this now. I think I missed a piece. No, I didn't. No, the set just looks weird from that angle. Sorry. So that's all correct. Um, and then that goes in there. We're just outlining this at the moment. So the upper body portion looks like that. Oh boy, sticker time. <laughs> All right, so we're looking for a number four. Okay, so number four looks like this one, and a number three, is that right? Okay, so in I guess in no particular order, 
Um, we just have to make it so it looks the right direction. I'm going to try and be good with these ones because my previous sticker placements have not been great. And then from this angle, that would be there like that. And this one would be the Captain America shield one, which is funny because, like, the shield itself is actually Captain Carter's, but Captain America's shield is actually still on the mech, which is strange because you would think, you know, like, the universe doesn't know what Captain America's shield is, so I don't really get it, but I'm sure they were just like, okay, we'll put it on for an Easter egg. It looks cool. Who cares sort of thing. I am doing that wrong. All right, so we'll flip that up like this. That goes in there. And that piece goes on the bottom, followed by this piece here. And then the three bits go on the side like that. Cool. So that's the body coming along. Put that aside. Um, and we'll go with these pieces here. So at the top, flip it over. And I think that goes there, yep. And then we're building in like this. I like it when studs uh, face multiple directions outwards. I think that's a really cool thing that Lego have learned to do over the journey. Um, and I actually really do appreciate it because it takes a lot of thought and like process to think about that sort of stuff. You know, like how does a build have to look on a certain angle to convey like the way the build should be? It's a really, really nice way of connecting everything together, in my opinion. This is why people are so much more talented than me. They come up with things like this. Like, this is just so cool to me. <laughs> like, I'm such a nerd. <laughs> and that bit goes on the top of the neck there. And this bit does the same. Just like that. Cool. And on to the next one. Okay, why has it got a warning for this? Is it because... It says day and night. I'm very confused. Does this like glow in the dark? Why is it? Can someone explain what this means? What the heck does that mean? I'm very confused. Is this supposed to glow in the dark? I don't know what this brick does. Why is it a thing? I am so confused. Lego, you... <laughs> You've baffled me. And I don't know what you're trying to say. Um, but I don't get it. So, Lego, please explain. Um, yeah, I don't know. It must be a glow in the dark piece because it's weird. Why would it say like a day and a night st like style thing? Unless when I put this on it, it like glows. I don't, oh, I don't understand. Does it glow or not? Oh, Lego. <laughs> You've stumped me. You've actually genuinely stumped me. Okay, that's snapped. So I wonder if it like needs to charge in the sun or something. That's so, because some glow in the dark things actually do need to um, get some light first, and then they will um, glow. So I'm not really sure where that's going. I'm very intrigued though. So that bit goes up above that bit. Cool. And then we need the piece number one sticker for the top of that, and these are going to face outwards. Sorry about the stickers, they take a long time to get right, but I'm trying to speed through them as fast as possible. And then these pieces here, we're actually nearing the end of this bag, so um, we'll just end the video after that bit's done, um, and then we will continue after this. And I will show you guys sort of where we're at once I've placed the parts on. All right, so this is where we're at at the moment with the torso. 42 steps and we're up to the second bag. That's pretty cool. I don't mind that. You know what? Like that's that's a pretty solid build. I'm going to say that's like a seven, um, seven to eight out of 10 at the moment. It's actually pretty fun. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys next time.